Hey everybody, JK here. In this video we're going to be discussing a cryptanalytic technique called the boomerang attack. This is a, uh, an extension of differential cryptanalysis, which we've talked about a little bit in some of the pages, specifically the, uh, the field page is probably the best uh, presentation uh, that, that I've made about uh, differential attacks. But uh, the boomerang attack enables us to make differential cryptanalysis stronger. Uh, typically, we're using it to recover a key, uh, just like you would with normal differential analysis. Uh, in our case, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to do what's called a distinguishing attack. Distinguishing attack. What this means is if we're given a box that contains a cryptographic algorithm and we want to identify what that algorithm is, this is a little different from what's typical in, in analysis where we assume that we know exactly how the box works and then we can make assumptions about it to break it. Um, in this case, we're handed a black box. I call it the magic box. That contains some cryptographic algorithm. Now, let's say that we are a, uh, a spy for Toontown. This is a fictional nation, a fictional state. Uh, our enemy is uh, Cool World. Now, Cool World uses cryptography because they're, they're good at communicating. They want to keep their communication secret from us. The algorithm they use is in these little magic boxes. Now, let's say that I managed to steal one for a short period of time. I'd like to know what that algorithm is so I can go back to my uh, analysts and say, all right, boys, we need to figure out how to crack this. Now, let's furthermore assume that, that I have a suspicion that Cool World uses feel six. That's six rounds of the fast encipherment algorithm. In order to verify this, we either need to take the box apart, which we're assuming is impossible, there's not enough time to do it. So, in, Or, we can use this uh, distinguishing attack to determine what's in the boxes, so we know where to focus our efforts. The basic way that this is going to work is that I'm going to select some plain text, I'm going to feed them in, get the ciphertext out, change them to get new ciphertexts, and then I'm going to feed it back through the exact same box. I'm going to decrypt the modified ciphertexts to produce new modified plain texts. Now while I'm doing this, I'm at, what I'm actually doing is working with differentials. So when I said I fed some plain texts in here, I fed two plain texts with a specific difference. I don't know what the difference is over here. This is a question mark. However, I XOR them with some other known difference over here to produce these. Then I send them back through, and what I'm looking for is is some uh, some plain text different plain text differences over here. You know, if these match these, then we know that the algorithm in the middle is field six. All right, this is an overview of the differential that I managed to rediscover that works on field six. I've only shown the first three rounds here because the differential itself is only three rounds long. Basically what you do is you feed plain texts in here that match this differential, meaning that when you export the two plain texts together you get this. On the left half we have 2, 0, 0, 2 for the bytes. On the right we have 82, 80, 80, 82. Uh, so what happens is the left half goes through, it XORs with 80 with 82, 80, 80, 82 to produce 80, 80, 80, 80. Now 80, 80, 80, 80 is a very special differential. It's one of the few that we have a 100% differential characteristic for through the feel round function. What this means is that as long as there's two plain texts that differ by this amount exactly, when they feed through this F box, they always produce this. Again, it's that 2002 differential. From there, this differential XORs with this differential, and as you can see, they're exactly the same. 
So what happens when you XOR two of the same numbers together? It produces a zero. Now this isn't the actual values that are getting XOR together to produce zeros. There's not the the uh, the intermediate value here in the cipher is not zero, but the differential between the two intermediate values is. Now one other characteristic of the uh, round function that's shared in common with every round function that I can conceive anyway is that if you feed the same thing in, if you feed um two plain text difference is zero, in other words they're exactly the same, if you feed that into the round function you'll get the same corresponding texts out. In other words if you don't change anything in the input nothing is going to change in the output. So that's why when you feed a zero differential in here you get a zero differential out here. Now this uh, right side comes down 80, 80, 80, 80. It gets XORed with the zero differential here to produce again 80, 80, 80, 80. When you XOR any value with zero you get back the original value. So this becomes the output of round three on the right side. We are done with this side. Over here the zero differential comes down and it gets XORed with the output of this round function. The input is again this 80, 80, 80, 80 that keeps showing up. As we showed up here, it goes in and produces a output differential of 2, 0, 0, 2. That gets XORed with the 0 to produce 2, 0, 0, 2. And that is how when you feed this input differential into the into the first three rounds of feel, you get back you get back out this differential. This holds 100%. No matter what the values are, no matter what the keys are, this always happens as long as this little bit in the middle is feel. Now, how can you find those? Uh, what I did, I didn't feel like monkeying around inside these G boxes trying to figure out uh, which ones held for 100%, which differentials came in, which differentials go out. It, it's it's no fun. So I, I wrote a quick little piece of brute forcing code that would brute force every combination of two values here, every combination of two values here, and check the differentials, and then see what differential came out the end. And then it goes and it finds the ones that hold for 100%. So if you always feed in 80 in here, and you always feed in 0 here, you'll always get 2 out. Um, this whole block right here is just a, uh, an exp a, uh, a breakdown of what's inside this little F box here. Uh, when you do that brute forcing code and you find what the differential combinations are, you'll find that as far as the 100% differentials are concerned G0 is equal to G1 so you don't have to do it for both and worry about any of that. Uh, once you're done you'll you have four characteristics that hold for these G boxes all the time. 0 to 0 obviously nothing changes in the input, nothing changes in the output. Then you have 80 which always produces 0, 2, these are with pluses, excuse me, 0 plus 0. When I say plus, I'm referring to this input plus this input. Since this function roughly approximates addition, very roughly it's got a rotation in there as well. So if you have 0 plus 80, you get 0, 2. If you have 80 plus 0, you also get 0, 2. If you have 80 plus 80, you get zero out of the deal. So what you can do is you can take these these known rules that you found and you can kind of look through the uh, the round function here and just start plugging in values up here. You know, you plug in an 80 here and a zero here and an 80 here and a zero here and see what happens. And once you're done with all that, you'll, you'll find that there are only four differentials that hold for the entire round function no matter what. Um, this one right here is 80, 80, 0, 0, which leads to 2, 0, 0, 0. If you move these 80s over to these two bytes, so you have 0, 0, 80, 80, the 2 moves over here. Uh, if you send in 80, 80, 80, 80, you'll get a 2 here and here with zeros in the middle. And of course, all zeros produces all zeros. This is referring to differentials, not values. Don't forget that. Um, so what can we use this three round differential for? Uh, well for one thing you can crack uh, feel 5. I managed to do a last round key recovery with that. Uh, you end up getting far enough into the cipher that you can uh, you can kind of unravel the last round, try every sub key and if the uh, differentials, the result match what you expect 
you can uh, recover the last round key that way. Uh, what we're going to use it for is again this boomerang attack. This gets us halfway through the cipher, through field 6. If you imagine there's three more of these, you'll know what field 6 looks like. So this will get us through this first three rounds. The second three rounds, however, are a mystery. This is the cipher text down here with the plain text up here. So this one right here is known. This one, these differentials down here aren't known, but you'll see quickly why that doesn't matter. Now I'm going to give you kind of an overview of how this boomerang attack is going to go. Uh, right here are these uh, right side up deltas or triangles if you prefer. This is the one that we, f that we find to plug in. Uh, in this case, it's the 2, 0, 0, 2, 82, 80, 80, 82. Whew. That is the input differential that gets us through the first three rounds of feel. So we plug that in. Somewhere in the middle here, we'll get that output differential. We're not worried about it right now. But when you get the values out, when you get the decryption, you come down here to these uh, ciphertexts 0 and 1, and you're going to XOR them by a, dif by a different differential. Now, when I say different, I actually mean the same. So that was a, uh, that was a trick. We're using the exact same differential for each half here. And I'll kind of break down how that works in a moment, but just stay with me. So we're going to take each one of these, and we're going to XOR them by this differential here to produce these new ciphertexts. Now, these ciphertexts differ by this upside down delta here, which also means that in the middle here, they differ by this value right here, that, that midpoint differential, that output that gets through the three rounds. The exact same thing is happening over here. So that means that somewhere in the middle here, we have this arrangement because they both went up, they both produced the same output differential just like this produces the same output differential. Now if these are different by the same number, the same value, and they are also different from each other by this value, that means that necessarily over here they have to be different by this value. So that means that this, this differential equals this differential. Now because this input here produces this output differential, that means that this input here must produce this output differential. So when we go ahead and decrypt the rest of the way, we keep going all the way out to the to where we can get at it again, where it's out of the box. Um, if we see this this original plain text differential we fed in, if we see it over here, if those two are equal, then that means that what we've discovered in the middle is field six. For a more detailed look at how this boomerang thing works, this is the most ridiculous diagram I've ever had to draw. Um, all of the ordering is right as far as what's in front of what. So if you imagine this whole thing as like a, a 3D arrangement, so this, these four uh, cubes right here represent uh, three, three rounds of feel. So these are half of the cipher. So this is the first half, this is the second half, and vice versa. So first half, second half, first half, second half, and in the back here, this is behind everything, this duller color is first round, or first half, second half, first half, second half. Um, again, we'll kind of go through what we're doing here. We're going to feed this uh, input differential here, this delta P, which I've noted down here, all the values of all these, as they apply to field 6 anyway. We feed it in, and as we found before, we're going to get this uh, delta X out of it. This two zero zero two eighty 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 eighty. That's going to happen in this middle section. We can't see this M zero and M one. That's inside the box. We can't get at that. But because we know that field six always has this differential characteristic, that this differential between these two plain texts lead to this differential between these two outputs here. We we know that delta x is that uh, that differential there. If this is field six. That's what this is all dependent on. We don't know, but we're kind of assuming when we do this. Alright, so we have delta x there. It doesn't really help us right now, but let's just remember it's there and keep going. So it continues through the second the second half of the of the, the uh, cipher. 
both of the plain texts do, and they end up as C0 and C1, the ciphertext. We can get at these. These are accessible, just like the plain texts were accessible. We can put stuff in and we can get stuff out. We can even put stuff back in to decrypt, which we'll do in a moment. Uh, we have no idea what the differential is between these two right here. We have no clue, but we don't care. Instead, we're going to XOR both of these by delta Z, which also happens to be the same as the input differential, because we're using the same differential characteristic twice, once up here and, twi and uh, twice down here, actually. So we XOR by this differential, delta Z, and we get ciphertext 2 and ciphertext 3. Uh, we, again, we don't know what the, dif what, what the difference is between these two. It would be the same as it is over here. But we don't know what that is, but we don't care. We feed it back into the box, so we're decrypting now. We're going to make the box decrypt and give us back plain text up here. So we send it in, it goes through the, uh, the second half of the cipher, these two uh, paler boxes here, and we get back, or we don't actually get back, it's in there, we can't get to it, M2 and M3, midpoint 2 and midpoint 3. We don't know what these values are either. But what we do know is that they differ, M1 and M3 differ by delta Y, because this delta Z, recall, this differential always leads to this differential. That was that same three round characteristic that we found earlier. So this always happens. If these two differ by this delta Y, these two, these uh, M0 and M2 also differ by this delta Y, because you have the same arrangement over here, that means that M0 and M1 differ from each other by delta X. They differ from M0 to M02 is delta Y. M1 to M3 is delta Y. That means that M2 and M3 must also diff differ by delta X, this midpoint value. Um, it's, it's, it's just an XOR thing. I mean, we'll work through it on paper, and, you, and you'll quickly see why, why that is. So if this is delta X... Remember what we, what we did earlier? We put in a differential up here, this delta P that always leads to delta X. If delta P always leads to delta X, and we have delta X down here, that means we should, we should have delta P up here. So we, f so we, uh, let the, we let the value keep going up, being decrypted, until we get the plain text back, plain text 2 and plain text 3. We XOR them together to get their differential up here, the one that we got back. Don't be confused by this arrow here. That just means that delta P leads to delta X. And the opposite is true in this direction. So, if this delta P equals this delta P, the one that we originally fed into the cipher when we started the whole thing, if these two are equal, then that means that this whole mess in here in the middle is field 6. If it were anything else, there's, there's, the odds would be astronomically small that these two are equal. If you think that's a possibility, you can always throw in another pair and see what happens. Uh, chances are, if it's not field six, it will <laughs> it will almost certainly come back as not the same differential. So uh, that's kind of an overview of the boomerang attack. I recommend that you follow through that tutorial page that is uh, accompanying this video on the AmazingKing.com. Um, this diagram and there's a lot of other ones like it on the internet and in papers and whatnot. You just gotta kinda poke around and just wrap your head around it until, until it, until it kinda clicks. But uh, there's a lot of stuff going on here. You're doing two encryptions, you're modifying what you get, and then you're decrypting back out and comparing the values that you get back out of the decryption. Um, can this attack be, uh, extent, be, uh, modified to get the, uh, may maybe like some, uh, last round keys down here? I mean, we have some differential information all up in here. But the question is, can we get to it? And I don't know the answer to that yet. So if I figure it out, I'll make another video on its tutorial page, and we'll all kind of learn together. Uh, happy analyzing. I hope you guys find this stuff as much fun as I do. See you later.